Oh, hi, it's Rev Pipster, and uh, I'm uh, responding to my dear friend on YouTube, um, Alan Williams, who, who's, you know, uh, our viewpoints, you know, we, we do share viewpoints um, on certain issues. Uh, and he's he's done a video on the Trinity Exposed, and I'm responding to something he said on part five, which uh, I think is, is very good, very valid. That we need to look at, um, look for God's perspective. We as human beings, as sinful, fallen human beings, need to look for God's perspective on things that, to know that we are getting the right viewpoint, that we are getting to see things as in truth. And um, he quotes John chapter twenty, verse twenty-eight, uh, because a lot of Trinitarians quote this verse to um, uh, acknowledge uh, Jesus as being divine. Uh, not being a, an angel that he is not just the son of God but the son of God in position to the Godhead the second person of the Holy Trinity it's the Trinitarian viewpoint um, where Thomas makes the exclamation my Lord and my God and we need to look at man's perspective not clutch at straws not clutch at, at reasoning or, or reason that hasn't been hasn't been thought through properly we've got to hang on to things which are which are solid and and um, have good biblical foundation to them and I think that uh, it's um, important we do that and Alan is perfectly, perfectly right on this one um, only thing I would put Paul fault on, on on his presentation on that perspective is the fact that he quotes verse 28 and then says we should be getting God's perspective and so on and then goes back to the chapter after going off um, two other verses to show that men think as men think not as God thinks uh, quoting Peter and of course and Thomas later and then he goes back to John chapter 20 but he goes to John 20 verse 31 that these things are written so that we might believe Jesus is the Son of God which I think is, is an error I think a lot of people do fall into this error uh, particularly people who are of the oneness perspective, Jehovah's Witnesses, Muslims, etc. They forget that in verse 27, well in verse 24, the context is set up. Okay, that Thomas was absent from the main group when they saw the resu resurrected Jesus. Then in verse 20, 20, um, uh, 26, um, it's set eight weeks later, sorry, eight days later, eight days later, and in verse 27, Jesus appears and sets up a situation which Thomas has to answer to. He says, put your hands in my nail prints, put your fingers in my nail prints, put your, thrust your hand into my side where the spear went, etc. And Thomas responds, and Jesus, in verse 29, responds to Thomas's response. So we, we, can, we can take a look, you know, to know if we're on the right lines or not, by seeing how Jesus responded to Thomas's response. If he was God, he would respond appropriately. If he was a divine being, he would have responded appropriately. I said divine being. Okay. A created being, an angel, a messenger, a prophet, whatever. But either way, as a rabbi, he would have responded properly to Thomas's remark. His statement. And let's look at this from, from that perspective. And then we know whether we are getting on into the you know the right perspective as to, as to whose perspective it is we're, we're looking at where we're looking at man's perspective so you know oh I don't know why Alan didn't do this because Jesus gives a response straight afterwards verse 28 Thomas says my Lord and my God and he says it clearly to him and then Jesus responds and, and I don't know why Alan you didn't put in you didn't comment on Jesus' response 
on their own. But anyway, we know because Jesus does respond. That's just the good news. So verse 29. And then we know um, the perspective we should be having. Thanks very much. God bless.